What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you can see on my table here, I have a slew of random parts. We're gonna be putting these random parts together, even though this one looks like a cross. We're gonna be putting these random parts together to make a uh, sequential gearbox. Now, if you guys know, I don't have paddles on the back of my wheel because I've taken them off. So I can't run a Seto in a sense because I can't run a lot of the cars because of paddle shifters. So. Since I have my right and left hand um, paddles wired into wires, I figured why not make the gearbox with two button switches so that I can have an up, up, down, down, basically sequential dog box style shifter on our rig. We got a bunch of random bolts. We got some button switches on some metal brackets. We got some other wood chunks. We also have wood pieces that already have holes drilled in because I've already basically assembled this to make sure it works. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and assemble this now. So I'll show you guys exactly how I did it. So we're gonna move some stuff out of the way. And we're gonna move this stuff out of the way. We have our little copper pipe that we've been using for the handbrake. We're gonna use it again. Of course, we're gonna wrap it in green, probably put a shift nub on it later on. Um, probably an NRG one. So we have a crossbar that I basically drill a hole through and put a threaded rod through. I got the threaded rod from Home Depot. It's a 5 16th threaded rod with some lock nuts and two washers so that when it's set up, it'll move. The bar will move freely and I don't have to worry about it as you can see. Two nuts, two washers, washers on the end and nuts on the ends. Those are, I'll show you what those are for, but this will move freely on the bar. So we have holes drilled in the board. So basically we're gonna take this and this slides on here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a washer on the one side and then this gets put in that way. And then on the other side of this, we're gonna put a washer as well and another locking nut, which we're gonna get that put on. But we're not gonna tighten it down all the way. And we're gonna get this uh, tightened on, but not all the way, because we still want a little bit of movement on the shifter. So you can see that's that. So we're gonna twist this up this way because I believe the hole's gotta go up. So then we're going to take the other side and do the same thing. Put a washer through like so. Washer and a nut. So you can see we will have basically a square with a bar in the middle. Quite simple, just like that. But before we do that, we gotta put the switches on put the switches on the one side and get those tightened down first. So we are going to grab, I believe I numbered these so I know which one goes where. So we are going to put this one which goes this way like so. And if you notice, once it's sitting, the bar will actually just tap the button, which will activate it, but it will tap it when it's there. So we're gonna take some of these smaller bolts that I have. You can use any size bolts or whatever. I'm just using a metal bracket. I'm gonna grab these smaller bolts, push to the outside of the washer on the outside, put our bracket through, do the same thing with one more of them. Then we'll get these tightened down. These ones I have not fully tightened through, so. These may take a second to get tightened down, so we'll put that through. And of course, I'm running washers on both sides of all the nuts. And then we are gonna put these lock nuts through, which I'm going to have to find out what size these are. I believe these are probably 10s. Let's we'll grab our 10 wrench. Yep, they are 10, so we're gonna have to grab our 10. Nope, that's a nine. Grab our 10 socket on a wrench, and we're going to hold this one side down, and then we are just going to tighten this down and get it all nice and tight down on there. All right, so we got those pretty much tightened. So before I move on, these are just basically uh, you know, push button that only activates when it's pushed down. I got these from Home Depot as well. You can use any type of push button. Then I just made myself a little kind of a half box bracket 
with some holes in it so that it angles so the bar pushes on there. So we're gonna get the other side put on on the other side of the wooden mount and uh, then we will get to putting it all the other side on and go from there. All right, so as you can see, I got both sides bolted down, all tightened up. So basically allows them to hit the buttons. So I'm gonna get the other side put on and uh, show you guys what it looks like when it's put on. And then we will go with how I keep it centered and get the tops put on and then get it wired up and get it onto the rig. So for all intents and purposes, this is exactly what it's gonna look like until I put the covers on it and clean it up. I do have rubber bands on top for the centering position because it's the easiest way I've figured out how to get it to center itself and not worry about it. So basically we have two button contacts on the inside and a bar in the middle which we will wrap green. But right now we're gonna give it a test. We're gonna get wires wired up and get it uh, plugged in because we got two wires there, two wires in the other one and then my pigtails are on the rig. So we're gonna get wires wired into it and uh, so we can't test it real quick before we finish it completely off. All right, so we got it hooked up into the rig. You can see I just put some clear plates on it as stop points for right now. We're gonna give it a run. As you can see, you got wires run down. Got it recessed into the center console with our handbrake on the side. Just wrapped it in a little bit of mint green. So we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna hop into a set of course so we get the game cam set up and uh, give this a go and make sure everything works. All right, so we got the game cam set up right now. We got our new sequential shifter set up. We got our hydraulic cam brake. And of course, our NRG Innovations wheel. I'm just throwing some gloves on real quick because uh, I have a cut on the tip of my finger and it uh, kind of hurts a little bit trying to use everything. So before we get into this, we're going to go into our settings and make sure our settings are set. Go to controls, new presets. And we're going to have the handbrake set as B. And we're good on that. And gear down, we're going to have it set as forward. Oh, I forgot to plug it in. So we got to plug that in and then we will get it going. All right, so now that we got the wires all hooked up, we're going to test this out. Gear up, we're going to have his back. My headset wants to shut off, but we're good on that. And then gear down, we're going to have his up. Left and right buttons, exactly how I wanted it to do. We got our handbrake set. So, uh... We might as well give this a shot here on a seto. We're gonna get the gloves back on, and I think we're just going to maybe do uh, a little uh, quick uh, sprint race, maybe. Quick race. Let's see where kind of car we want to drive, because now we can drive anything that involves a sequential shifter, unlike before we were not able to. So. I'm very curious now. I don't think I have any Porsches. Nope. I think I'd have to download every single Porsche. So we're not going to do a Porsche. Do we have some sort of GTR? We do have a GTR LM3. We're going to do a GTR race car. And... Barcelona's fine with me, same class cars, factory and factory and factory, and we'll go from here. So, we do have a new sequential shifter set up, I'm meaning to make this. Uh, it is a little bit bigger than I originally anticipated, but it sits nice in the center console, so it's actually not that big of a deal, because you guys know I don't have paddles behind my shifter, or behind my uh, steering wheel, because I have them taken off. But since we do have the quick release and all that, I could probably do some sort of button system back there if I wanted to. But this works just as well being over here. I don't mind taking my hand off to downshift and upshift. And it, it, it seems to be working pretty well. So uh, definitely super excited to uh, give this thing a whirl in a race car because, you know, I haven't been able to play a Seto fully yet because of the fact of not having paddles and when the car has a paddle it restricts you to using paddles only so once we get loaded in here we will uh head out to the track and uh see how we can do with this and hopefully not make a fool of ourselves in this race 
All right, so we finally loaded in. I think we're just gonna go straight to drive. And we're just uh, waiting on grid now. And our shifter works quite well, actually. So this is the first time I've actually been able to drive a race car in a Seto because of no paddle shifters. So it's gonna take me a minute to get used to uh, rip racing in a Seto. We are in fourth. And uh, we're hard on the brakes, but we're good. So our shifter seems to be working perfectly fine because we are not using clutch right now because it's a GT3 card. But when we go into drifting, which we will do before the end of this game, the drift car you still use clutch, but you just pull it like a sequential. So essentially, it is, works as a clutch dog box. That guy's on the inside of me. Thanks, buddy. I feel like my lines are a little bit off because I have not raced here in Assetto before. But we can now officially race in Assetto on the Xbox One. So I'm definitely super excited. Ah, yep, we lost it. So. <laughs> As a functional test of this shifter, we are fully functional with this shifter. Oh, oh boy. Um, my driving is not fully functional though. Maybe third person will help me? Probably not. This thing sounds sick though out here. So, a set of course is definitely a very different driving experience than what I'm used to with Forza and everything. Definitely going to be wanting to get more into this though. I wonder if I'm better in third person right now. I seem to have a little bit more control this way. I'm not completely off the track, so maybe I'm a little bit better in third person when it comes to racing. But the shifter is fully functional, so we are good on that. Definitely excited for a little head view. You see the backfires of this car. out of this GTR right now. Like I said, so functional test of this shifter is definitely here. Definitely going to be using it probably in other games such as Forza Motorsport 7 and such. So instead of looking for a gear and miss shifting when I'm drifting, when I'm going back and forth really quickly, I'll just be able to go up and down through my gears. So it might actually help me out a little bit. I don't know if we're catching these guys. Oh, we're not gonna catch them that way though. We're not totally losing these guys, that, or they're not totally losing us, so. I do like the in-car view on this game though. I'm gonna go with the in-car where we have the dash, just no steering wheel. Let's see if, I'm actually very impressed with how easily the shifter works and went together. It's a very simple design, just basically two button switches, but as you can see, it works perfectly. It doesn't help my driving, but you know, that's, not, that's not the point. Okay. All right, buddy, I'll take that spot back though. 
back to third person. Too much. So, I think we're going to switch it up to drifting and make sure that everything works. Oh, wrong button. Everything works according to how I want it to in a drifting aspect of it as well. Because uh, it would be sad if it, you know, didn't work for drifting. Because we are not going to be drifting the GTR. That would definitely be very difficult to do. I believe we're probably going to go with the Drift Toyota. Toyota 86 drifts. We're going to go into it. Time multiplier, track surface optimal. Sure, we'll just continue that. Yep, sure. So, if you guys like this video, more little tutorial on the rig, uh, probably will be leaving this here because I will be able to use this in all my other games just by using this just like you would a paddle. Still have access to the clutch, which is nice. So, I can use this in Horizon 3, I can use it in Motorsport 7, as well as I can also use it in Forza Horizon 4 coming out. Definitely excited about that. I do have my Ultimate Edition pre-ordered and waiting for to come out early in or late in September. We're going to change this to the fastest acceleration possible. And then we are gonna go and drive. There we go. Handbrake works, we're good. The only different thing that's gonna be weird about it is going into neutral. I also cycle through the gears, but that's just like a dog box. I can see it's working perfectly fine. I'm gonna kick it in. Quick clutch and downshift. It makes it really easy to find which way I want to go in the gears because it's just up or down, which is why a lot of pro drivers are running dog box style transmissions. I feel like I'm sitting a little bit too close to my seat because my handbrake lever is really high. So that's the only different thing I gotta use to is downshifting all the way. Still using clutch, still pulling the shifter. So we'll see if we can quickly get into second without worrying about accidentally going to the wrong gear. So this uh, sequential style dog box is actually very nice. A quick reference. A clutch kick there. Let the wheel spin back the other way. Whoop. There we go. And back over to the other part of the course. Yeah, my uh, my chair is definitely a little bit too close for me right now. As you can see, the handbrake lever is right, pretty much on my face when I pull it back, so we're definitely going to have to move slide the chair back, but we're just giving this a test right now. There we go. So, definitely excited about being able to fully play a set of course on the Xbox One now. So we'll be doing more of the set of course now on the channel. going to be doing some open drift lobbies and stuff like that. So if you guys want to get sideways in a seto, I will be running some open, probably live streams on the channel. That's gonna hurt. I knew that was gonna hurt. Let's pop my headlights up and uh, switch views to hood view. I wish I had my raised up on the roof view, but we don't right now. So we're gonna use what they give us. Quick e brake pull there. Clutch kick, a little brake action. There we go. A little bit back. Nope, lost it. Let's see if we can drift in third person like we were racing in third person. Because the camera in a set is very weird for drifting in third person, but. Because of that weird camera shift. So definitely not used to it. So I think that's going to do it here for this episode here on Seta Corsa and the mod new sequential shifter mod built 
for the wheel setup. So you guys know you can follow me on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. All of you in the description box below. Stay tuned to my Instagram. If you do not follow me on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I will be posting about open lobbies, about the Drift Invitational on Forza Horizon 3, as well as new future upgrades to the wheel setup coming. So until next time, I'm Evil Rabbit, and I'm out.